Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to a significantly sporty edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, and I am fully qualified to talk at you today about the fascinating behemoth that is the NFL. In my mind, NFL stands for Nitro Fueled Lemons, but alas, that will not be the topic today. Obviously, we're talking about the National Football League, where the peculiar shaped footballs roam free in a field, and wait, that's not what it is? Well, I'm British, what did you expect me to say? But what's the connection with dolphins and a perfect season? How much does that stonking big Super Bowl trophy cost? And is this going to be filled with stock videos of owls because the editors find that's one superb owl subreddit really funny? You're just going to have to watch to find out. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so sit down, zip it, and get ready for a Brit to desperately try and understand facts about a sport he knows nothing about, which incidentally is 101 years old, as we go through 101 facts about the NFL. Number one. So what is the NFL and what does it stand for? No, it's not neat fire lasers, it's the National Football League, and is an American football league composed of 32 teams. Number two. These teams are divided equally between the NFC, the National Football Conference, and the AFC, the American Football Conference. Conferences are essentially a little collection of sports teams, by the way. The NFL's 17-week regular season runs from early September to late December, with each team playing 16 games and having one bye week. Number 3. Something you may not know, considering the substantial cheddar it makes, technically the NFL is a non-profit organisation, and because it doesn't make a profit, it doesn't have to pay tax. All teams except for one, the Green Bay Packers if you must know, do pay income tax because the teams do make a profit. Number 4. When a season, that's a series of get- actually I don't need to tell you that probably, finishes, 14 teams proceed to the most super of all bowls, a tournament held on the first Sunday of every February. We'll talk about the Super Bowl later, but think of it as like a non-magical Triwizard tournament, but with just one game. Number 5. But let's make like a mindful blockbuster VHS customer and rewind for a second. American football, or gridiron football as it used to be known, began as an evolution of soccer and rugby from Britain. Number 6. It crossed the Atlantic in the late 19th century and was adopted by American colleges at first. The first match took place between Princeton and Rutgers in 1869, and the rest, as they say, is in this video. Number 7. The original games were almost unrecognisable to the version we know today. It was brutal and violent, being nicknamed Mob Ball by fans. In early rules, you weren't allowed to pick up the ball. Players had to kick or swipe at it with their hands, but they couldn't carry it like they do now. Number 8. That's when Walter Camp, also known as the father of American football, comes in. In the 1880s, he implemented the line of scrimmage, the snap back from the centre, the system of downs, not to be confused with the incredible rock band of a similar name, and the point system. Did you point? He's a big deal, basically. Number 9. Despite the increase in regulations and rules, football injury was still rife. According to the Chicago Tribune, in the 1904 season, there were 18 deaths, and in the following one, there were 19. This is in addition to a number of serious injuries. Number 10. It wasn't until 1892 that the birth of what's now considered to be professional football took place when William Pudge Heffelfinger was paid to play a game of football. The pay document is often cited as Pro Football's birth certificate. Number 11. Do -do 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 the first fully professional game was a few years later in 1895 between La Trobe Athletic Association and Jeanette Athletic Club. Two years later in 97, that's 1897, La Trobe was the first fully professional football club, paying all of its team members for the whole season. Number 12. Fast forward a few years and finally the NFL was formed, except it wasn't always called the NFL. In fact, when it was first formed on the 17th of September 1920, it was called the APFA, or the American Professional Football Association. Number 13. It was formed in the city, city of Canton in Ohio, in case you ever fancy a pilgrimage there. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is there too, it's pretty football heavy if I'm honest. Number 14. It was formed in a car dealership of all things in Canton. Technically, it was originally called the American Professional Football Conference and only involved teams from Ohio. It was only changed to the APFA after some New York and Detroit teams were added just a month later. Number 15. Just nine days later, on September the 26th, 1920, the first APFA team game was played in Rock Island, Illinois, which I can only assume is where Nickelback live. It was the Rock Island Independence versus the St. Paul Ideals, and the Rockers won 48 to 0. Number 16. Just a year later, one of the fiercest and oldest rivalries in history commenced. On November the 27th, 1921, the Chicago Bears, who were called the Staleys back then, played the Greenback Packers and beat them 20 to nothing. Number 17. 
I say that's one of the oldest rivalries because there's a bit of a disagreement on what's the oldest. Some say it's actually the Chicago Bears versus the Arizona Cardinals. You know, the one with the, the mascot thing that looks a bit like an angry bird. Number 18. In 1922, on June the 24th, the American Professional Football Association finally decided to change their name to the National Football League. Why? Rebranding, baby, because college football was actually what was far more popular at the time. Number 19. A college football player named Red Grange was among the first to make the transition to professional football from college, to the Bears to be precise, and he's named as an important influence on making the NFL popular. Number 20. On November the 6th, 1929, the first NFL game was played at night time. What a twist. This involved the Chicago Cardinals, now known as the Arizona Cardinals, confusing, playing against the Providence Steamroller. In my head, they're playing football against a literal steamroller, which must be too easy and also not fair. Cardinals won, by the way. Number 21. By the way, fun, well, okay, fun-ish fact for you, NFL players weren't required to wear helmets until 1943, which is insane. Number 22, ooh, ooh. I say this is insane because many former NFL players have been diagnosed with or have had chronic traumatic encephalopathy due to the impact of the force on their skulls, which damages brain tissue even when wearing a helmet. Number 23. In 2017, a study by Boston University was conducted on the bodies of deceased football players, and 99% of players who have played in the NFL had chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Bear in mind as well, that's when people wore actual helmets. Number 24. In response to this, the NFL have said that they pledged $200 million into medical research with a focus on neuroscience, which, you know, it's nice of them. Number 25. But hey, who cares about your brain and skull and stuff when you can make loads of money and be a star? The median salary for all NFL players is $860,000, but top quarterbacks contracts can pay $25 to $30 million per year. Money, money, money. Number 26. Money. The highest paid player is Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs, who makes $45 million annually. In 2020, the Chiefs signed Mahomes to a 10-year contract extension that will pay him $450 million, which was a record deal in the NFL. What would you even spend that on? Number 27. William Shakespeare even got in on the act playing in the NFL. He was picked by the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1936, and that may tell you it's not that Billy Shakes, but another one. Except, well, the, the awkward thing is he never played a single NFL game because it didn't pay well enough. Number 28. Jay Berwanger, the first winner of the Heisman Trophy, was the NFL's first number one pick in the college draft when it was established in 1936. Number 29. FYI, the Heisman Trophy is awarded annually for the most outstanding player in college football. Is that directly related to the NFL? Kind of, because it must play some role in what players they pick for the NFL, so it is NFL related. Okay, good, moving on. Number 30. The first televised NFL game was in 1939. Approximately 500 TV sets broadcast the game in New York. Number 31. The oldest team in the NFL are the Arizona Cardinals, who were established in 1898, joining the NFL in its debut in 1920. Along with the Chicago Bears, they were the only two teams that were part of the inaugural NFL roster that are still around today. Number 32. Speaking of the Cardinals, they also happen to hold a record. Unfortunately, it's not exactly a nice one, as they have the longest ever championship drought, meaning they're the team that have gone the longest without winning a title, last winning the NFL championship in 1947. Number 33. During the Second World War, the NFL struggled. Gosh, I wonder why that could be. In 1943, for example, neither the Philadelphia Eagles nor the Pittsburgh Steelers could put together a full team. So, for that one season, the teams merged to become the Phil Pitt Steagles. I see what they were going for there, but that's a terrible name. That's a really terrible name. Number 34. Steagle. A total of 994 NFL players and staff served in the armed forces during World War II, 21 of which died in action, and two players went on to win a Medal of Honor for their services. Maurice Britt of the Detroit Lions and Jack Lummis of the New York Giants, who was awarded posthumously. Number 35. World War II saw American football move overseas with their servicemen. Ireland hosted their first game in 1942 with teams made up of US servicemen in front of a crowd of 8,000, who were likely fellow members of the armed forces. Number 36. The drama doesn't end with World War II though. After the NFL refused to expand their league in the late 1950s, the AFL, or American Football League, formed in 1960. Number 37. 
The AFL had eight teams when it opened. The Boston Patriots, the Buffalo Bills, the NYC Titans, the Houston Oilers, the Denver Broncos, the Dallas Texans, bit of a basic name that, the Oakland Raiders and the Los Angeles Chargers. The Boston, Buffalo, Denver and Houston teams opened the world of American football to wider audiences through previously neglected major US cities. Number 38. Later, the Chargers were moved to San Diego and the Texans to Kansas City, and the Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Bengals would later join the NFL in 1966 and 68, respectively. Number 39. During this time, the NFL decided it would expand and founded the Minnesota Vikings and the Dallas Cowboys, the latter of which would really stick it to the AFL founder Lamar Hunt, who basically started the AFL because the NFL wouldn't expand to Dallas, and then the Dallas Texans struggled to compete for fans with the Cowboys. Oh, the shade. Number 40. The AFL introduced many aspects to the game that are now commonplace, like having players' names on the back of their jerseys, an official scoreboard clock, and just a more exciting style of play. Number 41. So why am I telling you about the AFL? Good question. Well, after a few years of rivalry and competing for players, the two leagues realised that they couldn't afford the bidding wars and started to discuss a merger. The meaning of life. So, in June 1966, the leagues came to an agreement and combined to a 24-team league that would later be further expanded. They officially merged in 1970 under the name National Football League, the way we know and love it now. Number 43. One of the biggest results of the merger was the Super Bowl, kind of. For the first two years, it was called the AFL-NFL World Championship game, which, let's be honest, is a mouthful. People nicknamed it the Super Bowl, and by the third year, it stuck around long enough to be the official name. Number 44. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. Why is it called the Super Bowl, for example? That, that's a bit of a weird name, right? Well, the legend goes that the Kansas City Chiefs owner, Lamar Hunt, coined it based off the Super Bowl toy his kids played with. Number 45. The Pittsburgh Steelers and New England Patriots have won the most Super Bowl titles, winning six times each. Number 46. The Patriots have a slight advantage there, though, having appeared in the most Super Bowls. As of 2019, they had appeared in 11 title games, three more than the second place teams, the Steelers, Cowboys and Broncos. Number 47. The Patriots have also lost the most titles alongside the Broncos. Both teams have lost five Super Bowls each. It's sad, yes, but not as sad as the Buffalo Bills, who lost four times in a row between 1990 and 93. That's also a record for the most consecutive appearances, but they probably don't want to remember that. Number 48. The Miami Dolphins are the only team in NFL history to have a perfect season in 1972. They won every single game that season and then topped it off by taking home the Super Bowl in the Super Bowl 7. Number 49. Speaking of the trophy, it cost a whopping $50,000 to make. The trophy stands at 22 inches tall, weighs 7 pounds, and is made out of sterling silver, originally created by Tiffany & Co. Ooh. Number 50. The trophy actually has a name too, which is the Vince Lombardi Trophy, which is in honour of, well, Vince Lombardi, who is the head coach of the Green Bay Packers who won the first two Super Bowls under his reign. Number 51. Before 1970, the trophy was just called the World Professional Football Championship Trophy. After Lombardi died in 1970 of cancer, they renamed it in his honour, and it was first awarded to the Baltimore Colts at the fifth Super Bowl. If you're from Baltimore, then you know the score. Number 52. The players of each Super Bowl winning team also get smaller replicas of the trophy, which is said to be worth more than $1,400, which is understandable as the Lombardi Trophy takes four months to make. Number 53. The NFL Trophy is also far more expensive than the World Series Trophy, which costs around $15,000 and the NBA Finals Trophy at $13,500. Just further proof that the NFL has the deepest pockets in pro sports. Number 54. There are 12 teams that have never lifted the Lombardi Trophy. They are the Bengals, Browns, Bills, Cardinals, Chargers, Falcons, Jaguars, Lions, Panthers, Texans, Titans, and Vikings. Number 55. In fact, the Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, Jacksonville Jaguars, and Houston Texans have never ever even made it to the Super Bowl. To be fair though, the Jaguars and Texans are the newest teams in the league, joining in 1995 and 2002 respectively, so they've had less time to get there. Number 56. More food is consumed on Super Bowl Sunday than on any other day of the year in the USA, with the exception of Thanksgiving. It even beats Christmas, that's International Food Coma Day. Impressive, America. Number 57. Of course, over the years, the Super Bowl has featured some iconic adverts, which we can't go into that much because we'll be copyright claimed into oblivion. But they feature top-tier celebrities and go down as some of the most iconic commercials of all time. 
Number 58. The huge viewing figures and possible iconic status come at hefty prices though. According to Ad Age, in 2020, the cost of a 30 second advertisement is around $5.6 million. Keep in mind you've got to pay the talent too and you're looking at an eye-watering total. Number 59. Despite costing that much money, advertisers aren't allowed to use the name Super Bowl in their ads. Companies have to use terms like the big game or other creative names when referencing it. You may not have noticed it before, but you will now. Number 60. Of course we can't talk about the Super Bowl without mentioning the famous halftime show. In the first Super Bowls, the halftime entertainment would be university marching bands. In fact, Grambling State University Marching Band has performed at the most Super Bowl halftime shows, featuring in six between the 60s and the 90s. Number 61. Since 1991, the show has featured pop music acts. When Michael Jackson headlined Super Bowl 27 in 1993, the viewership between the game's halves increased for the first time in history, instead of the usual decrease, which started the trend of pop singers headlining the show. Number 62. Well, that would be the case until 2004, when during the halftime show of Super Bowl 38, Justin Timberlake exposed Janet Jackson's breast in an infamous controversy called Nipplegate. Viacom, which owned CBS, MTV and so many other companies, then decided to blacklist Janet Jackson's music and music videos from all of their radio and TV channels because of the half a second of nip that she didn't even cause and yet Timberlake, who did cause it, saw zero repercussions. Number 63. Following the wardrobe malfunction and over half a million complaints, why? The halftime show featured what were considered family-friendly acts in the form of various classic rock artists from the 70s and 80s like Paul McCartney, The Rolling Stones, Prince, Bruce Springsteen and The Who. Prince isn't family friendly. Nintendo 64. Pop artists started to be reintroduced again in 2011 and has since featured Madonna, Beyonce, Coldplay and Lady Gaga amongst many others. Katy Perry and her dancing shark pals have also taken to the halftime stage and set the record for the most halftime viewed show with 118 million viewers. Mainly for the sharks, right? Yeah. Number 65. That 2015 Super Bowl holds the record for highest viewership for any Super Bowl game, as well as the most watched television broadcast of all time, with a peak audience of 120.8 million viewers as the New England Patriots had a fourth quarter comeback against the Seattle Seahawks. Number 66. Eli and Peyton Manning are the only brothers to both win the Super Bowl MVP, winning in consecutive years. They're also the only brothers to play quarterback at the Super Bowl. Number 67. The Mannings are also the highest paid NFL players of all time, with Peyton in second earning $248.7 million and Eli taking the top spot, earning $252.3 million. This is set to be beaten by Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan, who are expected to exceed overall earnings of $300 million by the end of their current contracts. Number 68. Despite their seemingly bottomless pockets for players, NFL cheerleaders are paid between $75 to $90 a game. Including two preseason games and eight regular season home games, most cheerleaders earn $750 to $900 for an entire season. Number 69. I shouldn't be doing this while talking about cheerleaders. Speaking of cheerleaders, the first NFL team that hired professional cheerleaders was the Baltimore Colts in 1954. The cheer squad was also part of the marching band. Number 70. Mascots, on the other hand, earn more than the cheerleaders do. The yearly salary for a mascot can range between $23,000 to $65,000 per year, and you don't even have to have athletic skills or meet insane standards of what people deem to be attractive. It is a mass, mass mascot's world. Number 71. According to a 2009 Sports Illustrated magazine article, about 78% of former NFL players have gone bankrupt or are under financial stress after just two years of retirement. Since this shocking report, there's been a movement to help players manage their finances. Number 72. Players are drafted into teams from college football during the annual NFL draft, which takes place every spring. 256 players are selected during the draft and are often the best players at college level. Number 73. Statistics show that the total league revenue of all 32 teams of the National Football League in 2019 was 15.26 billion US dollars. Since 2001, the NFL has made 171.71 billion dollars. Number 74. Speaking of dollar dollar bills, y'all, every October, when the NFL sells and promotes breast cancer awareness, 8.01% of the money spent on that merchandise goes to the American Cancer Society. Number 75. A standard NFL game on the television features just 10 minutes and 43 seconds of actual gameplay. Commercials take up 60 minutes of the three hour broadcast, replays take about 56% of the broadcast, and around 60% of the game time is just the lads in a huddle or standing at the line of a scrimmage. Number 76. 
The NFL season is the shortest professional sports season of any major American sport at just 182 days a year. That's it. That's the fact. Short. Number 77. Depending on which source you look at, around 3,000 cows are slaughtered every year to make NFL footballs. The Super Bowl alone uses the hides of 22 cows to supply enough footballs for the game. Number 78. Whilst Manny credits baseball player Jackie Robinson as the first black athlete to break the colour barrier in sports in 1945, Charles Follis was the first black professional football player back in 1904. His Shelby teammate also happened to be the future Dodgers exec Brant Rickey, who went on to sign Jackie Robinson. Number 79. The colour barrier was initiated in 1934 when African Americans were banned from the NFL. This was lifted in 1946 when the LA Rams were told they had to start signing African American players otherwise they couldn't keep their lease on the LA Memorial Coliseum as it was public property. The Rams signed Kenny Washington in 1946 and he became the first black player to sign an NFL contract. Number 80. The Chicago Bears have the most retired numbers of any NFL team with 13. Five teams don't have any players' numbers retired. Three are due to a lack of history, Baltimore, Houston and Jacksonville. The other two are because the team don't believe in such honour, Dallas and Oakland. Number 81. The coldest Super Bowl was number 6 in 1972, when it was just 39 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 4 degrees Celsius to everyone else. Conversely, the hottest game was the following year, when the kickoff heat reached 84 degrees Fahrenheit, or 29 degrees Celsius. Number 82. The largest point spread in NFL history to date was in 2013, when the Denver Broncos had a 28-point lead over the Jacksonville Jaguars in Week 2. Again, I'm not wholly sure what that means, I've tried to work it out, but it's all very confusing to a British nerd. Number 83. The person to score the most touchdowns in NFL history is Jerry Rice with 208. Rice also holds the record for the most points scored by a non-kicker at 1,256. Number 84. Emmett Smith is the only other non-kicker to have scored over a thousand points. Smith also holds the record for all-time leading Russia, having run more than 18,000 yards during his 15-year football career. He also holds the record for most rushing attempts with 4,409. Number 85. Kickers and punters tend to play a long time in the NFL, and the only players not at these positions to play in over 300 games are Jerry Rice, who played wide receiver, and quarterback Brett Favre. Number 86. Speaking of quarterbacks, Steve Young is the only left-handed quarterback in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. At the time of writing, there are 25 other quarterbacks in the Hall of Fame, all righties. Number 87. In 1970, place kicker Tom Dempsey broke the record for longest field goal in NFL history at 63 yards. He was born with no toes on his right foot and no fingers on his right hand, wearing a custom flat front kicking shoe to play. Despite controversy that this shoe might have given an unfair advantage, ESPN Sports Science declared that this was not the case. Number 88. The record was matched by Brett Mayer, Graham Garno, David Ackers, Sebastian Janikowski and Jason Elam, but was broken in 2013 by Matt Prater who kicked a 64-yard goal. Those extra inches matter, lads. They really matter. Number 89. Okay, so let's talk about Tom Brady. He currently holds 81 NFL records, including most Super Bowl appearances, 9, most Super Bowl wins, 6, most Super Bowl MVPs, 4, various oldest player records, most games started, played, and won by a quarterback. It's just a machine, isn't he, really? Number 90. Brady did, however, come under scrutiny in 2015 in what was dubbed Deflate Gate, when it was alleged that Brady was aware of the Patriots' balls being underinflated in a match against the Indianapolis Colts, making them easier to throw, catch, and grip. Number 91. Whilst the NFL decided to suspend Brady for four games over the scandal, the decision was ultimately overturned due to failure to provide proper notice to Brady of the charges against him. Honestly, the investigation is full of science and speculation, it would take forever to explain it, but tell us what you think of that decision in the comments down below. Number 92. Dion Sanders, who's also known as Primetime and Neon Dion, which is a great name, is the only player in history to have played in an NFL Super Bowl and a Major League Baseball World Series. He was actually part of the winning Super Bowl team twice. Number 93. Terrell Owens is the only NFL player to date to have scored a touchdown against every single team in the NFL. Yep, all 32. He played for five teams over the course of his career, scoring an impressive 156 touchdowns, even if these celebrations were insane, like the bird dance thing. Number 94. In fact, some touchdown celebrations have been outright banned and have become offences. I won't lie, Terrell Owens has come up a lot in researching controversial touchdown celebrations. Foreign objects are now banned from the field after Owens pulled a sharpie out of his sock, for example, and signed the football following a touchdown. Number 95. 
What started as some fun wiggles from ecstatic players became excessive. And in 1984, the rulebook included illegal celebrations being any prolonged excessive premeditated celebration by individual players or a group of players. Number 96. Players can be fined for violating these rules, as any football fan will know the celebrations were getting way out of hand. The rule, however, was scaled back in 2017, so look forward to seeing more dances and other mental things as long as there's no prop. Number 97. Gamers among you will have heard of the Madden NFL video game series, fronted voice and named after the legend John Madden, who coached the Oakland Raiders to a Super Bowl win in 1977. Number 98. Despite retiring in 2009, John Madden still fronts the games and lends his expertise. He's even said that the games are a great educational tool for learning plays and the rules, so suck it mum and dad, I'm learning, okay? Number 99. Speaking of Mr. Madden, he coached Carl Weathers for the Oakland Raiders in 1970 before he went on to play the legendary Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies, as well as a number of different shows and movies, most recently The Mandalorian, which everyone should watch because it's great, hashtag non -spom. Number 100 a uh, year. William Perry is named the refrigerator because of his enormous size. At 6 foot 2 and weighing around 335 pounds during his NFL career with the Chicago Bears, after winning the Super Bowl in 1985, his ring was the biggest one ever made at size 25. For context, most adult males are size 10 to 12. Goodness me, it's number 101. I know oh, that's baseball. And finally, as Super Bowl 55 is looming over us all, you probably won't be overly surprised to hear that Super Bowl Sundays are apparently the least popular day of the year for a wedding. Yep, apparently having a third of the population enthralled by football is an obstacle for a wedding. Cheaper catering though. So that was 101 facts about the NFL. Who's your team? Who's your pick for the Super Bowl this year? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give us a like while you're here, and hey, also subscribe and join our team, our squad, if you like. It's great fun. Honest, we've got lots of good videos coming up. In the meantime, though, two videos on screen you're really going to enjoy. Yep, take it from me, you're going to absolutely love these ones, folks. Why not click on one and prove me right, and I'll see you there. Goodbye now.